How do you go on your very first camping trip if you've never done it before? Whether you're an urbanite looking to connect with nature or just a curious soul seeking new experiences, I'm gonna show you how to go camping right now in seven easy steps with an important bonus tip at the end. Step one, gather your gear. Okay, I did a detailed video about the camping essentials, which I'll link below. But basically, you're gonna need a sturdy tent, a warm sleeping bag, and a comfortable sleeping pad. You'll also need a lantern or flashlight to find the bathroom at night. And if you plan to cook your meals, you're gonna need a camp stove, utensils, and a cooler for food storage. You'll also need firewood, kindling, matches, and a camp chair if you plan to have a campfire, assuming that's okay where you're going, which we'll talk about in a minute. It's also very important to bring clothing appropriate for the weather, your toiletries, a towel, and a basic first aid kit. Step two, decide where to go. Now that you've gathered all your gear, it's time to decide where you're gonna camp. For your first trip, a developed campground with a picnic table, a fire ring, bathrooms, maybe an hour or two away from your house for one to two nights is a great place to start. That way, if something goes terribly wrong, it's really easy to bail, go home, and try again another day. The easiest way to find a campsite is to simply Google camping near me. Now, I'm gonna assume that because you're a complete beginner that you're gonna be car camping, as in driving a vehicle to a campsite and using either a tent to sleep in or your actual car. In the results, you'll likely see a combination of campgrounds and RV parks. I'd recommend ignoring the RV parks for now because those are generally set up for people with big campers and they've got hookups and water and sewer and a bunch of services that are expensive and that you don't need to pay for. Plus the whole vibe there is gonna be more like a park with grass and your neighbors are really packed in really close versus a nice woodsy getaway feeling that you would get with a forest service campsite or a BLM campsite or you know something in a state or national park. You're going to probably see a bunch of options that you don't know what they are so just go ahead and click through and see what they offer. For a first trip out, I highly recommend state parks if you can find one. They're less crowded and chaotic than national parks, and they typically have park rangers there in case you need help with something. And they often have bathrooms, showers, picnic tables, fire pits, all the basic things you need for a good first trip out. And they're often quite pretty. If the state parks are full or you can't find one near you, private campgrounds can be okay too because they'll have an attendant bathrooms, showers, but look for those that specifically have sites dedicated to tent camping because those are gonna be a little prettier and maybe a little more spread out than the RV options. And they'll also typically be cheaper. This way you'll get more of an authentic camping experience versus feeling like you're staying in an RV parking lot. Basic amenities you're looking for are a picnic table, a fire pit, bathroom showers, and an attendant on site in case you need help with something. You can do more rustic, unattended national forest or BLM campgrounds. They're a little farther out and for your first trip, um, it might be better to be in a place that has just a little bit more comfortable amenities to help you ease into the whole camping thing. Some places with a camp host is really nice and some national forests do have that. So check on that. Uh, but I'll tell you, flush toilets and running water are really nice too. Be sure to check the weather conditions at the place where you're going to make sure it's not gonna to be too hot, too wet, or too cold. Then go ahead and make a reservation. Pay attention to nighttime temperatures and be sure that your sleeping bag is rated for temperatures lower than that. Otherwise, you're gonna be waking up in the middle of the night, feeling cold, being uncomfortable, and not having a good time. Also, for your very first camping trip, I do recommend choosing a place that takes reservations because it just reduces uncertainty in a situation where there's already enough uncertainty. Number three, learn some basic camping skills. Now that you have all your camping gear and a plan for where to go, you need to do a dry run with all of this equipment. You want to set up your tent in your backyard before your trip to figure out all its quirks and avoid frustrations when you're actually at your campsite. And don't forget the tent stakes. That's probably the number one thing that people forget. If your sleeping pad needs to be inflated, do that at home first to make sure there aren't any leaks and bring a patch kit with you just in case. Nothing is worse than having to sleep on the cold hard ground because your sleeping pad failed. You also wanna test your stove to make sure you know how to use it and definitely bring extra fuel with you on the trip. It's way better to have too much than too little. 
you'll want to familiarize yourself with campfire regulations in the area and be aware some areas require campfire permits and some areas have total bans. So check the area where you're going to know the rules and you'll want to know how to responsibly build a campfire before you go. There's a lot of YouTube videos on this so I would just search there and watch a few of those. And finally, don't forget to bring some kitchen trash bags. You want to leave your campsite cleaner than when you found it. So picking up all the trash, dousing the hot coals with water, and packing everything out with you, which we'll talk more about in a minute. Step four, prepare the food and water. There are a couple ways to approach this. You could keep things super simple by bringing takeout food the first night for dinner, bringing no-cook food and snacks for breakfast and lunch. That's if you don't want to bother with the stove and cooking and all the cleanup. Cooking delicious meals out in the wild is one of the most enjoyable parts of camping. So if you plan to cook, think in terms of easy to prepare meals in advance. The more you cut and measure and bag and portion things at home, the easier everything will be for you in camp. You definitely need to think about the dishes and utensils you're gonna need along with how you're gonna manage cleanup. Let me tell you, paper plates and plastic forks are definitely your friend here. Consider packing foods that don't spoil quickly and can be cooked over a campfire. Grilling is fun, but make sure your campsite comes with grill plates over the fire pit or you're gonna have to bring your own. Bring plenty of water or make sure that potable water is provided at your campsite and don't forget the s'mores. Step five, set up for safety. As you're gonna be in a completely unfamiliar environment, safety should be your number one priority when camping. Always be aware of your surroundings, look out for wildlife, and sometimes errant human behavior. Back your car into your camp spot so that you can get away quickly if you need to. Choose a flat spot for your tent that overlooks your campsite, but is maybe set back in the bushes a little bit for privacy from your neighbors. You wanna keep your food sealed and stored safely at all times to avoid attracting unwanted critters. This usually means either locked in your car or in metal storage bins that may be provided. Be sure to properly latch these bins to prevent animals, especially bears, from getting into your food. As the saying goes, a fed bear is a dead bear, and that's because bears that have been habituated to human food become very aggressive and eventually have to be put down. So don't leave food for bears. When you arrive, be sure to familiarize yourself with any rules or regulations set forth by the park or campground and be sure to follow them. Walk around the campground and find the nearest water spigot, bathroom, showers, any area designated for washing dishes, and look for the trash bins. But the biggest rule to remember at any campsite is never leave a fire unattended. Step six, embrace nature. Once you get your camp set up, sit down, Take a deep breath, listen to the sounds of the forest, and embrace the beauty of nature all around you. Disconnect from technology and soak in the ambiance. Take the time to explore your surroundings. Go on a little hike, indulge in some stargazing at night. Remember, the best part of camping is immersing yourself in the great outdoors and getting away from your everyday life. When you climb into your sleeping bag for the night, you may be nervous about some of the unfamiliar sounds you hear. Staying in a hosted campsite, it's unlikely that the people around you are going to bother you because most likely they're there to escape into nature as well. Usually in a campsite, after 10 p.m., everything quiets down. Any animals that you do hear in the middle of the night are probably just small critters foraging around your campsite looking for crumbs. Make it a rule not to bring anything smelly or scented into the tent because then the animals aren't going to be curious about what's in there with you and they'll likely leave you alone. Also, I highly recommend earplugs for camping because frankly, ignorance is bliss. Step seven, leave no trace. So you overcame your fears, camped for a night or two, hopefully had some fun, and now it's time to go home. Now I'll get to your very important bonus tip in a minute, but as you pack up, be careful to bring everything you brought with you and then some. You wanna leave no trace that you were ever at that campsite. Pack out all your trash, dispose of it properly, and leave the area cleaner than when you found it. 
It's our responsibility to preserve the natural environment, and sometimes that means taking out trash left by others. If we all pick up a little extra, then the world will be a more beautiful place for ourselves and future generations. Now here's your bonus tip, and it's important. Once you get home from your first trip, take a few moments to jot down notes on what worked and what didn't. Maybe your sleeping bag wasn't quite warm enough in the wee hours of the morning, so you bring an extra blanket or get another bag for next time. Maybe you forgot some important utensils that you'll need to bring for cooking on your next trip. Maybe some of the clothing you brought didn't work, or maybe you're super glad you brought that sun hat and bug spray and want to be sure to remember it for the next time. Start developing your own checklist for these trips that evolves over time while it's fresh in your mind. I like using Google Sheets because it's easy and free. Two of my favorite words. The more you do these camping trips, the easier they get. And if you want to know the six things you need to go camping tomorrow, check out this video here. Am I recording? Okay, good. So for your first trip, <clears throat> God, be normal. If we all pick up a little extra, then the world, oh my God, there's like a bug on my face. Then the wee hours of the morning, oh my God, I got an ant on my back. And some guy's calling his dog. Okay, let's try this again. Okay, maybe you're sleeping, oh my God, what's on my back? It's a bush, okay. Freaking out, okay.